Welcome to part seven of the Lee Green Associate Test Prep video series. This is the last video in the series and covers a number of fun and creative ways to build green. We'll wrap up with some details about the Lee Green Associate testing process. Let's start with innovation. This category recognizes that there are a lot more creative ways to reduce our impact and improve the lives of people in the environment than are identified currently in the strategies suggested in the various rating systems. You can add up to five points by employing innovative strategies. To achieve all five innovative points, a project team must achieve at least one and up to three pilot credits, at least one and up to three innovation credits, and no more than two exemplary performance credits. You can also get a point for including a lead accredited professional on your project team. Option one, innovation, one point. You must achieve significant measurable environmental performance using a strategy not addressed in the lead green building rating system. This allows you to explore new ideas, technologies, or approaches that support environmental, social, or economic improvements. You can come up with something entirely new, or some good innovations can be found in the LEED Innovation Catalog, which is in the LEED Credit Library. There are several types of credits in the Innovation Catalog. One category includes credits from other rating systems. LEED often accepts credits from one rating system for innovation credit in another. One good example is green cleaning from LEED Operations and Maintenance. LEED BD&C projects use this credit often. Another category is historically accepted innovation strategies. There are a few strategies that have been used by project teams for years, things like green education. Option two is to pilot a new credit. These pilot credits address sustainable topics that are not covered in this LEED rating system, but may be included in the next version of LEED if there are positive results from a number of projects that test them and show that they are replicable. Retired pilot credits is another category in the innovation catalog. Pilot credits sometimes move into the innovation catalog if they've had positive results, but are not yet being considered for a future version of LEED. You can get additional innovation points for employing additional strategies, either additional innovations or pilot credits, or by stretching to achieve exemplary performance. You can get one to two points for exemplary performance. For example, you can get exemplary performance points for increasing the use of renewable energy. Renewable energy must account for 15% of the total energy versus the one to three points that you get for having one to 10%. An exemplary performance point is typically earned for achieving double the credit requirements or the next incremental percentage threshold. I'll share a couple of examples of credits that allow points for exemplary performance by exceeding requirements. One is access to quality transit. You will need to double the highest transit service point threshold, such as doubling 360 weekday and 260 weekend bus trips. Another example is to achieve exemplary performance in protecting and restoring habitat by either option one, which is to double the 30% restoration requirement or restore at least 60%, or option two, which is to double the financial donation requirement. Other examples are listed in the PDF. And you can also get one innovation point for including a lead accredited professional with the appropriate specialty on your project. Next is regional priorities. 
The intent of regional priority points is to encourage projects to achieve credits that address geographically specific environmental, social equity, and public health priorities. Projects can earn up to four of the six regional priority credits. These credits have been identified by regional councils and local chapters as having additional importance for their area. For example, here you can see the regional priority credits for the St. Petersburg, Florida area. You can get up to four additional points by achieving four of these six credit areas. The last important topic we're going to address is synergies. Different design strategies are interconnected and may contribute to more than one lead credit. Now this is a complicated slide, but the purpose of this slide is to give you some ideas for how design that impacts site features can help reduce environmental impacts and consequently help your project earn multiple credits. These are called synergies. For example, if you look at the hydrology of a site, rainwater collection and landscape planning can help with stormwater flow patterns, rainwater absorption, and the health of plant species on the site. This can help your project earn credits for protecting or restoring habitat, open space, and rainwater management. You need to understand what synergies are and be able to analyze strategies and evaluate what credits they could help you achieve. There are lots of potential scenario questions that will ask which few strategies can contribute to various credits. Let's go over a few of them. This is an example of how site selection can help a project earn multiple credits. This is the Dockside Green Project in Victoria, British Columbia. Selecting an infill site can also help with alternative transportation access, community connectivity, protecting habitat, maximizing open space, stormwater quantity and quality control, and fixing a former brownfield site. Now my test prep instructor many years ago said that he always included green roofs in his projects because they can help with heat island effect roof, protecting and restoring habitat, maximizing open space, stormwater quantity and quality control, and optimizing energy performance. Another example, water efficient irrigation can help you with rainwater quantity and quality control, site development in protecting and restoring habitat, site development in maximizing open space, heat island effect, roof and non-roof, and optimizing energy performance. Rooftop solar can help you earn credits in the areas of green power, optimizing energy performance, and heat island effect roof. Daylighting can also help with quality views, interior lighting, optimizing energy performance, site assessment, and the integrative process. Rainwater harvesting systems can help with water efficiency by capturing rainwater for non-potable uses like irrigation or toilet flushing. Sustainable sites, managing stormwater runoff to reduce site erosion and flooding. Energy and atmosphere, reducing energy required for water pumping and treatment. And innovation. It may qualify for innovative performance by using rainwater in creative applications. Permeable pavement can help with sustainable sites by reducing stormwater runoff and erosion while managing heat island effects. 
water efficiency by enhancing water management by allowing infiltration into the ground. Materials and resources by supporting the use of sustainable or recycled materials in construction. And innovation. It can contribute to innovative stormwater management techniques. Finally, passive solar design can help with energy and atmosphere, reducing energy consumption by optimizing natural light and heat. Sustainable sites by aligning building orientation with solar patterns to maximize site efficiency. Indoor environmental quality by improving daylighting and thermal comfort for occupants. And innovation. It can earn innovation credits for advanced integrated use of passive solar techniques. For this last section of the video, we'll go over the test process so you can register and take the test sooner rather than later. The first thing you want to do is download the LEED Green Associate Candidate Handbook, which is free. This gives you detailed instructions, which we'll summarize here. Second, you'll want to register for the test. Use your USGBC login or create a new account. Make very sure that the name you type in the registration is the same name as is on the ID you'll be using. Select the correct exam, and the registration will redirect you to prometric.com gbci, where you will schedule your exam date and location. You'll get a confirmation email, print your confirmation, and keep the confirmation number handy. And once you register and pay, you will have one year to schedule your actual exam. When you are redirected to Prometric.com, you'll schedule your test. You have two options. First, to schedule a remotely proctored online exam, you'll want to review the Pro Proctor User Guide. Confirm your computer's compatibility. Uh, supply the computer with a camera, microphone, and internet connection, of course, and install Prometric's Pro Proctor application before the test. GBCI recommends that you connect with an Ethernet cable rather than using a wireless connection to prevent being dropped from the exam. If this happens, you should relaunch ProProctor to resume your exam. Or two, you can go to a test center. This slide shows the Prometric locations in Central Florida, but you can find them all over the U.S. A few more details. If you are a student, you'll want to take the exam while you're still a student because it is half the fee, $100. And there are 100 multiple choice questions, and you will have a couple of hours to take the exam. Well, that covers the basics of the LEED standards and strategies and the process to register for the test. I recommend you study the material in these videos and take as many practice tests as you can for about two weeks, and then take the test while the information is fresh in your mind. I have talked to many who have taken the exam. Now, you'll have to sign a statement that you'll not disclose the contents of the exam, so no one shares that. But they all say that it is super important to practice with as many sample questions as possible. There are a number of sources of sample questions in books, on the USGBC website, and other third party lead training companies, both of those for a fee, and in some college courses like the Sustainability in the Built Environment course at St. Petersburg College or the SPC Net Impact Chapter Commons. As a lead faculty, I regularly set up lead Green Associate study groups to go over more practice test questions if you'd like to join. These are generally two to three times a year, right after the end of each semester, to give you a chance to take the exam between semesters.
Getting your LEED Green Associate accreditation is the first critical step in your sustainability professional career. The next step is to work towards one or more of the LEED accredited professional specialties. Now this is where you truly gain credibility wherever you go, and I highly encourage you to pursue LEED AP. Be on the lookout for future study groups in preparation for this. One of those at St. Petersburg College is LEED Lab, which is an internship that takes you through a LEED existing building operations and maintenance project in preparation either for the LEED Green Associate if you don't have that, or better yet, the LEED AP o &M. LEED Lab can be taken in person or online using both real and VR versions of the Natural Science and Math Building on the SPC Clearwater campus. I hope to see you there. This concludes the LEED Green Associate Test Prep video series. If you are not taking this as part of a course, you can purchase the PDF version of the series with the script at american-sustainability.com slash shop slash downloads. I hope you got a lot out of the series and best of luck on the exam.